Today, we are talking about how to start a podcast. We're really excited about this. A lot of times, business owners have their businesses um, going, and they have heard about starting a podcast, and they really are excited about it. So I want to tell you some tips that I've come up with that will help you and guide your your um, path as you create your podcast. So the first step that I have is to have your business, your normal, ordinary, day-to-day business processes well-oiled and organized and in place first. So before you do podcasts, try to make sure that you have an organized business in place. Um, You want to have your website up and ready. You want to have, you know, customer service steps followed through and oiled really well and then you wanna create a podcast. So first step, have processes in order first. Second step, you want to build your followers after that. So build them up, let them know that there's gonna be a podcast coming. Uh, The more successful the first few podcasts can be, the more successful your podcast will be. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, step number three, uh, find your voice. So you have something to say. That's great. And you have soapboxes that you want to talk about. You want to get up and you want to you want to tell everybody in the world about this thing that helps your business or this thing. Um, You don't use podcasts to sell to people. That's a really big turnoff. Um, But what you can do is cover current topics that have to do uh, that that kind of relate to your products that you have. Um, You want to build on the mission and the vision of your company as well as tying in local or current trends that are going on in the world. So keep that in mind. Um, Don't talk about just what you want to talk about. Make sure that you feel strongly about the topic and have something to say about it, but that you're not just jabbering on and on and on and on about things that um, only you care about. So Check um, current trends, make sure you're up on those, and that'll be really helpful for engaging your audience. Also, it's a really good idea to, when you're looking through the current trends, to find a problem that your target audience is tra- is having currently and, and utilize the podcast to show them how it can be solved. So don't necessarily say, I can solve that problem for you. Say more like uh, consulting would solve that problem for you, um, enabling your business to be more organized. See how I slipped that in? Pretty nifty, huh? Okay, let me just check right here. Okay, step number four, organize your content. I love organization, you know that, but this is really important. Organize your content. So what you're going to want to do is have a... Have an outline that will show you uh, a path of things that uh, you're going to talk about. So maybe the first one's going to be more general. It's a really good idea to start out general with the first few. Maybe like a, how it all began or you know something that solves a current problem. Maybe not detailed um, because you don't want it to be very long or, or make people lose interest. But... You do want to get them used to you, get them comfortable with you, and give them something to um, engage them. So be funny. Have a personality. um, Tell a joke. Don't be afraid to be a little more off the cuff because those kinds of things are really important to show um, character and get people engaged. So come up with an outline. You can switch it around later more general in the beginning and more detail oriented towards that as you get used to um, what you're doing. Um, Next step of organizing your content is to base the themes of your podcast along with the themes of your blog articles. That's really key to keeping everything organized with your company, making sure that your messages match. You're going to match um, the podcast to the blog article and the blog article to the social media so that everything is kind of talking to and relating uh, on the same topic. It doesn't have to relate exactly, but you want it to kind of have something to do with it. Um, it's a good idea to 
um, you know that the marketing um, belief is that seven times is the number that people will need to hear uh, something seven times and in seven different ways. Uh, so multiple platforms of hearing the same thing and getting the same message out there is going to benefit you, um, especially if it's solving their problem. So keep that in mind. You're not just, you're not selling necessarily, you are helping and that's key to this organization. Uh, you also want to utilize collaborations. So if there's people that you've met along the way, um, I'm not talking about your mom necessarily, although that might be a good option. If your mom is pretty, um, pretty uh, hip and with it and she really has something to say, has a lot of wisdom, then bring your mom in. Um, but other collaborations, social media influencers, other companies, those are going to be good ways to to build your audience. Your audience will grow as you invite other people that share your same target market um, with you. So keep that in mind. Um, also at the very end of that, um, tie in uh, certain uh, promotions that have to do with products that you have. So you can give a little shout out at the end. Um, for instance, if I'm doing something about consulting or about organizing your business, and I, I came up with like the five perfect steps to solve your business crisis. Um, at the very end, I'm going to say something like, um, you know, just for all of our really um, adamant listeners, we're really grateful for you. And we're going to give you 5% off of a consulting session um, at Gerber Business Solutions. Just tell them that you heard from us or um, use promo code you know, GBS 2019 or something like that. So you just want to tie in promotions towards the end um, or let them know of similar products that will help to save the, to solve the problem that they have. That's where you can sell, but don't oversell. Just use it as an option and as a thank you for listening. That's what you want to do. You also number... Step number five, you want to locate your studio. And what I mean by that is, where are you going to speak? Um, what's the environment? Are you going to talk at work? Are you going to, um, do you have a home studio that you're going to set up? It's really easy to uh, record podcasts. The great thing about podcasts is that you can't see the face. So you don't have to be nervous and you don't have to make a fool of yourself, um, you can just, um, you know, be natural, be a, a little more organic that way. Um, so at home or at work, wherever it is, you need to make sure you have a good recording device, a really good microphone. Um, there's some really cheap ones that are pretty good. You can, you can find really easily. Um, you also need a reliable computer simple editing software or someone to edit it for you and fast internet. Those are going to really, really help to solve your problem. Step number six, that's six, <laughs> um, publishing. So you get done recording your podcast and you're ready to publish it. What do you do next? Um, you need to make sure that you have really good professional artwork so that you're um, the message matches this feeling that they get when they see the artwork that is the image that they see first. Um, so uh, that will go out on social media. It might not necessarily be inside of the listening app, um, but make sure that you have good professional artwork to attract the eye and share the mission the mission and the vision um, that you have for this podcast as well as tying it into your company. Uh, you also need to test out the playback speed and make sure that things aren't choppy, that there's nothing that gives feedback. Um, the, the easier it is for them to listen, the more engaging the voice um, the more fun you'll have and also the more engaged you will have, uh, your audience will be as well. Um, step number seven, yeah, I think that's seven, um, you need to choose a podcast host. What do I mean by host? So a host 
uh, is a, a podcast host is basically a library where your podcast can reside with other podcasts. Um, so there's a lot of good ones. There's Google Play, there's iTunes, there's a bunch of other things, um, but those can have really high costs, um, startup costs. So there's also other ones that are, I would say, equally good, and they have maybe 14-day free trials or some options where you can pay uh, per listener or pay per podcast. So those are some things to look at. I've uh, included a link that has a whole list of like 20 of them or something. So you can choose one of those if you want, or you can do your own research. Um, but there's some pretty good ones to choose from too. Um, so you're going to choose the podcast host, upload your podcast to it, and then after it's uploaded, you need to put the podcast app on your website. Uh, so Wix and WordPress and, you know, um, all those other website companies, they all have apps that where you can upload your podcast to in an RSS feed style where it's just automatically uploaded as soon as it's uploaded to the podcast host. Um, so you can get an app that has like a player on like a listening device on your website. That's pretty much what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the listening device on your website. And then from there, I would recommend having like a separate page on your website for podcasts and then you can click, uh, then you grab that link of that page and you copy it over to your social media with that really nice looking artwork. So you use the image of the nice looking artwork and have the link to your podcast, um, uh, the podcast link on your website and um, you'll get... You can, you can either do it that way or you can also um, recommend that they go and follow you on iTunes or Google Play or one of the other hosts that you have. Uh, so those are really great ways. Those are eight steps. The ninth one is to continue um, posting on schedule. I don't mean that you need to make sure that you follow the schedule and the topics need to stay the same every single time. I don't mean that. Um, things happen and you should be able to be really loose and be able to be flexible if you see a collaborator that would be a good uh, fit for a certain time of the week um, you know do it then but be consistent as in whatever your schedule is whatever you started doing don't stop doing that schedule um, you can slow it down a little, but I wouldn't do it less than every month. Um, so if you're gonna be if you're gonna do a podcast, you need to be consistent and remember to push that content out um, and utilize it. You know, you can post back, you can refer back to blog articles, you can attach them to it as well. Um, you know, you can do other things um, that tie in those podcasts. Um, so, so make sure that you're consistent and, um, just have fun with it. Don't, don't worry so much about other voices sounding the same or other podcasts having similar topics. Um, every voice is different and yours needs to be heard. So make sure that if you are doing this in a larger company, that there's someone good to voice the opinion of the company and you're not getting in trouble with slander or anything, um, but otherwise just have fun and um, be sure to let us know if there's anything we can do to help you organize your podcast schedule or organize your business. Thanks so much for listening. Well, have a good day. Bye.